Hi, welcome back to my channel again, and I'm back again. And this video, um, we will be talking about since the last time we have discussed already with the introduction and the intuitive idea of a derivative. So we will talk this time about basic theorems on differentiation. <laughs> Okay, so let's start now. So the first theorem is um, the derivative of a constant function. So it says here that if f of x equals c for all x where c is constant, then f prime of x is equal to zero. Meaning to say that if your function is just a constant, then its derivative is zero. So let's say, for example, um, f of x equals uh, 1 half. So f prime of x, derivative of that is 0 because 1 half is a constant. Okay, next theorem. If r is a rational number and um, f of x is equal to x to the r, then the derivative of f of x is equal to r times x raised to r minus 1. So you only have to subtract by 1 on the exponent of your x and then you transfer the original exponent as a coefficient of your x. Your f of x is x to the negative 1 over 5. So negative 1 over 5 is a rational number. So therefore, if you solve for f prime of x here, so this is your r here. So you move the negative 1 over 5 and then x negative 1 over 5 minus 1. Simplifying this we get negative 1 over 5 x to the negative 6 over 5. Simplifying it further we have 1 negative of 1 over 5 x fifth root of x. Okay so we have theorem number 3. It says here that if f is differentiable function at x and then you have a capital f which is the same as c times f where your c here is a constant then the capital f is differentiable at x and if we take the derivative of this capital f we just get the product of c times the derivative of the small f okay let's consider this for example let us say your f of x is equal to 5x cubed. So in this case, this is your capital F and then this is your f of x. So hindi ka sali si 5. So in this case, your 5 here is the c. So to get the derivative of this, so f prime of x, that's the same as 5. And then you just have to take the derivative of f of x. So that's technically 3x squared. Kasi diba, ina-apply natin dito yung derivative niya using the theorem number number 2. So this is equal to 15x squared. Okay, next we have theorem number 4. So it says here that if two functions, the f and g, are differentiable at the same x, the h, which is the same as the sum of two functions f and g, then the then that h is differentiable and its derivative is actually the derivative of the sum. Equivalently saying that this theorem says that the derivative of the sum is actually the sum of the deriv derivative. Say for example, let us say our h of x is 7x to the 5 minus 11x plus 4. So basically, you can regroup this. Let's say your f of x is 7x to the 5 and then your g of x equals negative 11x plus 4. If you take the derivative of f, okay, using theorem number 2, since this one here is a rational number and using theorem number 3, that the constant will still remain as constant so what happened now it is become 7 times 5 x to the 4 and so you have 35 x to the 4 
And then, if you take the derivative of G using theorem number 2 again, you just have just negative 11. And then, um, using the theorem above, the derivative of the sum, so therefore, the derivative of H of X is the same as 35x to the 4 minus 11. In fact, actually, um, when you solve for g of x, you're actually using theorem number 4 already because this is the sum of negative 11x and the 4. That's it. So our next theorem is theorem number 5. It says here that the product of two functions, so uh, let's say your h is the product of two functions and such two functions are both differentiable at x then the product's derivative is this one. Let's say our h of x is um, 3x squared plus 1 times 3x minus 7. Okay, so you just have to think of this as your f and this one is your g. Okay, and then solve the h prime of x so what happened is, you just have to take the, you just have to copy the first, so the f, so you copy the first, so 3x squared plus 1, and then you take the derivative of the second, this one, so the derivative of that is 3, plus, you just have to copy the second, so 3x minus 7, and you take the derivative of the first, so in this case, the derivative is 6x. Simplifying this, you would get 9x squared plus 3 plus this one becomes 18x squared minus uh, 42x. If we simplify it further, we would get um, 27x squared. Correct me if I'm wrong with my arithmetic. Then minus 42x plus 3. So therefore, this is now the derivative of the product of two functions. Okay, so our last theorem for this uh, video is the derivative of a quotient. So, it says here that if you have two functions which are both differentiable at x, and then these two functions forms a quotient. So let's say we have a new form function, let's say h. This h here is equivalent to f over g. And then provided, of course, this g is not zero, otherwise we have the undefined function, then h is differentiable at x, and then the derivative of your h is the same as that. So meaning to say that the derivative of a quotient is just this one. In fact, there is a mnemonic for that. You have high and low, so that means to say you have low d high, so that's derivative of high, minus high d low, low over low squared. Let's say our h of x is equal to 1 minus x squared all over 3x minus 5. So how do we get the derivative of this again? So that's low d high. So you copy the low. This is 3x minus 5. So the d high. So that means derivative of the high. Well, in this case, this is negative 2x minus high. So you copy the high d low so that means uh three all over the square of three x minus five so if you simplify this you'd get six uh, negative six x squared plus 10 x minus three plus three x squared all over three x minus five squared and so this becomes what happened if you simplify it further you get negative 3x squared plus 10x minus 3 all over 3x minus 5 squared. So in this case, your x is not equal to 5 over 3. Otherwise, you would get undefined function. Okay, that's it. Okay, to summarize all our discussions for all the theorems we've discussed, we will solve these uh, two examples here. So let's start first with number one. So let's get the derivative of f here. So this is actually the product. So let's, it's the product of two functions. So it's like the f and the g. So if you get the derivative for, let's say, h, bayon, 
in this case kasi F siya so you just have to assume one is G one is H whichever you like and then if you take the derivative of that so ano nga ulit yun you copy the first so that's X squared minus one and then you take the derivative of the second so you have three X squared plus you copy the second so that's X cubed plus three and then you take the derivative of the first in this case this is 2x so that's the derivative already so you just have to simplify it further so you'd get um 3x to the 4 minus 3x squared and plus you'll get 2x to the 4 plus 6x so your final answer would be 5x to the 4 minus 3x squared plus 6x. So, that's it. Okay, for number 2. Uh, okay, so this is actually the sum, a combination of the sum and then the quotient. Kopyahin ko muna siya para ma-picture out natin. So, f of x equals 5 over x cubed plus 1 over x. And so, we let... Let's say g of x equals 5 over x cubed. Then, so I can have 5x raised to negative 3. Tama. And so, g prime of x is the same as... So we can use formula number 3 where c na hindi siya ma... Ano siya? Hindi siya madadamay. So just have copy the c which is 5 and then take the derivative of x to the negative 3 which is negative 3 x to the negative 4 kasi negative 3 minus negative 1 so you'll have negative 15 x to the negative 4 or negative 15 over x to the 4 okay. and so we will have to solve the other so let h of x be equal to 1 over x then we can write h of x equals x to the negative 1. So, take the derivative of h of x. He'll get negative 1 times x to the negative 2. Or this is the same as negative 1 over x squared. Okay. Therefore, the derivative of f prime of x we will now use the derivative of the sum this is equal to negative 15 x for 4 i'm sorry negative 15 over x to the 4 minus 1 over x squared and that is our final answer so guys if you have any questions or clarification please let me know so that we can discuss that Hey guys thank you so much for watching so if you have any questions or clarification don't hesitate to let me know about that so that we can discuss this next we'll talk about chain rule derivative so see you and have a great day